Hello, welcome to the video. This is my first tag that I've ever created. I've been wanting to make a tag for a really long time, and then I got the idea for this tag, and I really like how it turned out, so I'm going to be doing it and tagging people later. Now, a lot of you have probably already decorated for Christmas, but as you can see, I have not yet. So this book tag should help that. Question one is Christmas tree, and if you know what a Christmas tree is, it's a tree that you put in the middle of your living room. That doesn't go there. Name a book that seems out of place in its genre. A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingle is specified as a science fiction fantasy. I do understand why it's considered a science fiction novel, but in my opinion it's really just a lot closer to being fantasy. There are science fiction elements in it. It's really like fantasy with like a sprinkle of science fiction. Question 2 is Lights. I don't know if you guys are rainbow colorful Christmas light people, or if you're the white lights kind of people. I like the pretty colors. So the question for this is find a book that has all the colors of the rainbow on it. Red, yellow, orange, blue, green, purple, pink, and then find another book that is mostly white. For my book with all the different colors of the rainbow, I got Scumble by Ingrid Law. We have red, orange, yellow, greens, blue font, and on the back here we have purple and pink tints, so all the colors. And for my all white book, I got this edition of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. It's actually a bind up of all five of Charles Dickens' Christmas books. I'll be reading the second one this December. It's actually a rather boring copy of A Christmas Carol if you ask me, but it has all five books in it and I like that. Question number three is The Elf on the Shelf. Name a book that kind of creeped you out but wasn't really supposed to. Or a book that creeped you out or scared you that isn't classified as scary, horror, or thriller. I actually don't know where our Elf on the Shelf is. We lost it. I can't find it anywhere. For this, I'm picking a book that I'm currently reading, and that is Summer of the Gypsy Moths by Sarah Pennypacker. This book is about two girls, one of them's living with her great aunt, and the other one is a foster kid that her great aunt took in. And then the great aunt dies, that's not really a spoiler, you learn that in like the first three paragraphs. And neither of them want to get sent to another foster home, hi Adam. So they try to go on living their lives in that house and tricking everyone into believing the great aunt is still living. This book kind of reminds me of my own book, Sea of Trees, in the sense that it's two kids that really don't like each other, that are kind of relying on each other to survive. But does this book look like something that would have creepy parts in it? Because that's not what I was thinking when I got it from the library. I mean, yes, it's mostly lighthearted, but as I mentioned, it's two young girls stuck with the dead body of their great aunt. So so I wouldn't recommend reading at least the first half of this during like nighttime or right before bed. Next we have stockings. I have no idea where I'm going to hang these. Okay, I don't know what to do with this other stocking, so we're just we're just going to like set it here, over here. We're just over here, right? Okay. Name a book that had a few really good parts in it, but the rest of it was just kind of boring filler. This is a really popular book, so feel free to yell at me in the comments for this. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I found this book to be extremely boring. There were a lot of action, fun, cool scenes, like the scene on the cover with the dragon and everything. I felt like the majority of this book was description of them walking and running out of food. And I know it's a book about a journey, but I really didn't need this much description about them just walking. I would trudge through line after line of description of them running out of food and then I'd get like two pages that were actually exciting followed by another 50 pages that were them walking. Next we have The Christmas Wreath. Name a book that you are so proud of reading that you could hang it on your front door. I have no idea where I'm going to hang this. 
I think I'm gonna have to say Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. I didn't read the whole book, so this is kind of a cheaty answer. But I did, a long time ago, get like halfway through this, and I mean, look at this. I'm very proud that I even tried to start reading this at such a young age. Next is Nativity Scene. Name a book that you think is ridiculously underrated. If you can't really quite make the connection, the nativity is like Jesus the king of world being born in a farm. Baby Jesus. I have to say Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I feel like a lot of people think this book is like just whimsical and funness, but I think if you really read it and think about it, there are a lot of themes in Alice in Wonderland, and a lot of the nonsense just represents things that are in the real world. A Christmas Carol, I would also say for the same reason. Not quite as drastically as Alice in Wonderland though, like I've only heard one person say that A Christmas Carol is just fun and whimsical. Which they are, they're both fun and whimsical stories, but still, this one, at least, is not extremely considered great, awesome, like, Charles Dickens type thing. This is Charles Dickens. And also, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that The Daring Adventures of Penhaligon Brush is one of my all-time favorite books. It's like my favorite book, actually. And I've never seen anyone talk about it, not just on booktube, but anywhere. Next question is the Dickens Village pieces. Name a book that has really awesome world building. These are our two most recently bought Dickens pieces things. So a book that I've read recently that I really liked the world building in was this book called Wonderland by Tommy Kovac and Sony Liu. If you are an Alice in Wonderland fan, I highly recommend this graphic novel. This book takes place in Wonderland after Alice has already left. We follow the character of Mary Ann, who if you've read Alice in Wonderland, you know she's the white rabbit's maid who Alice gets mistaken for. What fascinated me the most? with this book was the world building that we got for Alice in Wonderland. It made a lot of connections and made things make a little more sense, but while still managing to keep the nonsense and madness. The next question is fake snow, and I was gonna make a joke about living in Alabama and the likelihood of getting snow, but we actually got a ton of snow yesterday, so... Irrelevant. Our actual fake snow goes with our Dickens pieces that we haven't gotten out yet. So this is gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to clean all this up later. Here's some snow. A book that seemed to be a ripoff of another book. For that one, I kind of have to go with the Son of Angels, Jonah Stone, Spirit Fighter series by Gerald Law. I didn't see it at the time that I read this, because I read this a long time ago, but now that I've read the first Percy Jackson book, I'm realizing that this is Percy Jackson ripoff. I did really enjoy this book, and I would recommend it to Christian fans of Percy Jackson. This series is about a boy named Jonah, who finds out that one of his grandfather is an angel. He discovers angel powers that he has, and he goes on a big journey to save his mother. Next we have Menorah. I know Menorah is not Christmas, it's Hanukkah, but it's close enough, so deal with me here. My family is not Jewish, so these candles are going to have to satisfy you. So if you know the story of the Menorah, you know there were these people, and they had enough candle oil burning oil to last for one day, but it lasted for eight days instead. So the question for this one is name a series that seemed to take forever to read. I'm going to go with A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. This is a very long series. It is 13 books long. It probably took a couple years to get through it. My mom bought this first one. She would get a book and she would read it to me and my brother, but once we were done with that one, it took like maybe a month or more before we ordered the next one. Smells like rubber. The next question is the tree topper. The star, or the angel, or the bow, or the cardboard box. 
What is the crown jewel of your book collection? I think I'm gonna have to go with this really nice Barnes & Noble bind up of the first three books in the Time Quintet series. It has a wrinkle in time, a wind in the door, and a swiftly tilting planet. If you've seen my Easter Eve vlog, you know that I got this in my Easter basket last Easter. It is a very pretty and beautiful edition of one of my favorite books. I'm really excited for the movie. Is anyone else excited for the movie? because I am excited for the movie. It's got really cool chapter headings, it's got this little bookmark built in. This is just really a nice book. So we're done. My bookshelves are all ready for Christmas. I'm going to tag my sister Cassidy Cash. I'm also going to tag Books in Five. If anyone else wants to do this tag, go ahead. And also tell me in the comments of this video that you did it because I want to come watch it. And also, you're awesome for doing my tag. Thank you. Buh. Feel free to add a few of your own questions if you want to. Have a happy Christmas and a Merry New Year. I'll see you guys sometime with a new video. Bye! We have the best thing ever outside. Snow! That might not be exciting for a lot of you, but I live in Alabama, and this like kind of snow flurries are like once every 15 years. This is our snowman Blaze. He was standing up straight when we built him. I don't know what's happened to him. This is his girlfriend Summer. It's been a long time since we've had life-size snowmen. Hi. <laughs>